I'm going to show you how to Asian squat with three exercises in this video. To do the Asian squat, you don't need to wear glasses and you don't need to be good at math. What you do need is muscles that are able to control the position. And a lot of people lack that. So when you go do your Asian squat, you go down, your weight starts shifting back. You don't know what the heck is going on. Your legs don't know what muscles need to fire. And then you fall on your butt. So let's address the muscles that are really stiff and weak in your body so that you have the strength and mobility to do the Asian squat. The first exercise is a bent knee hamstring and glute stretch. You're just going to get a chair up against a wall and you're going to keep your knees bent while you push your butt back. You want to keep your weight in the balls of your feet, keep your heels off the floor so it's like you're stretching directly into the glutes and high hamstrings. If you put your heels down on the floor, you're going to lose some of that stretch. So make sure you keep those heels up. If you need to, just go ahead and put some books or something there so that you can keep your weight shifted more forward. Think about crunching in lower to the floor. If you can put your hands lower on the floor, that's great. If not, no worries. Then you can move around, find the stiff, tight spots figure out where you most don't want to move and just hang out there breathe calmly let those muscle fibers stretch out after about 30 seconds to a minute or whenever you get tired just slowly work your way back up with assistance from the chair eventually you'll find that your hamstrings and glutes are not so stiff anymore and then you can go ahead and let your heels down on the floor find the balance point and work your body into an upright position and see if you can get some of that glute and hamstring work in that deep squat position. Keep working yourself lower and lower to the ground. You can rock back and forth so that the leg and hip muscles get used to stabilizing you in this bottom position. You will find the balance point eventually, and with the strength exercises I'm going to show you, you'll be able to work your way up and out as well. I want to give a quick shout out to Christian Osterbrink and Jacqueline Hernandez. Thank you both for your $20 donations via PayPal to support this channel. I really appreciate it. Now let's get back to those Asian squats. Next up is a strength building exercise. You're going to do sets of eight to 12 repetitions of these assisted squats. You're gonna feel your quads working, the muscles that really affect your knee in a deep squat. Make sure to keep weight in the front of your foot. You wanna stay in a pain-free range of motion. As you build strength, your range of motion should increase. At first, if you're only able to go a few inches, that's fine. One tactic to build more strength with a limited range is to just hold the end position for 3 to 30 seconds instead of doing reps. Another great thing you can do is bounce in difficult areas. So if you find there's a couple inch range that's really tough, stay in that range, bounce there. As long as it doesn't feel really painful, crunchy, or crackly, you're going to be okay. Your goal is to be able to get all the way down so your hamstrings touch your calves. Once you can accomplish that, you can work on doing the entire exercise with very little or no assistance, and then work on rocking back onto your heels at the bottom position, and then coming right back up on your toes and balls of your feet. This will mean you have the strength to control the entire motion. Having this balance point and leg strength will prevent you from falling back when you Asian squat. The third exercise is to build strength in your hip flexors, which are the muscles on the top high part of your thigh. You're going to sit down in a chair and lift the knee up as high as you can, feeling the muscles on the top of your leg working. Go 5 to 15 repetitions, trying to build strength and height with each movement. To build even more strength, hold that top position for 5 to 15 seconds or throw a dumbbell on top of your knee and lift that resistance up towards the sky. You can use kettlebells, dumbbells, ankle weights, whatever you've got to increase that resistance. So why would we need to strengthen these hip flexor muscles? Because when we're in an Asian squat, we need those muscles to hold the torso forward. If those muscles are too weak, if they can't control this tight angle between the thigh and the torso, we fall backwards. So here's your Asian squat routine. You're going to do that stretch on a daily basis. Spend one to even 10 minutes cumulative across the whole day. So maybe you do that stretch for a minute, 10 times in one day. Maybe you do it twice for five minutes each time, just working to get a little deeper, a little further, and a little bit more hip mobility. You're going to do the strength exercises I showed you 
after you do the hamstring stretch and only two to three times a week. If you're a total beginner, I suggest starting with just twice a week and make sure there's space in between the days, meaning Monday and Thursday or Tuesday and Friday or whatever combination like that. You wanna make sure you have adequate rest time so you don't get so sore that you can't walk. And finally, the secret sauce to being able to Asian squat is to challenge yourself on a regular basis. Every single day, just see where you are with your Asian squat and see how deep you can get. As you're doing these exercises and challenging your body every day with the Asian squat, you'll find that you're getting closer and closer to being a full Asian. If you found this video helpful, hit that thanks button down below or use the PayPal link in the description box. I promise I will not use your money to buy a fork. Like, share, and subscribe. And as always, I hope you remember that pain sucks. Life shouldn't.